Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woken. I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we talking about today? Well, it's pretty close to the Valentine's Day event, so I figure it's finally time for me to sit down and talk about what the Valentine's Day event is going to be. Which is going to feature Bazette over here. I'm going to talk about the event itself and the units, and not the other banner units, because I'll be talking about them in a separate video, because there's too many of them. I'll show the schedule, what it will likely be like, and that's about it. Because um, if I included them to this video, the video would be much longer than I would intend it to be. <laughs> so, that's going to be today's video. Uh, so... Valentine's Day 2022. So when should you actually expect it? It should be a week from when the 2024 pre-release campaign, which was the 28th, which was Sunday, and then it should run for two weeks. So a, two, a week from the 28th is likely the 4th, and then it will likely end on the 18th. That's just a guess, though. Who knows how it will actually be. There is going to be a stream on the 31st. I believe, and they might announce it sooner. Who knows? <laughs> honestly, I don't know. The scheduling could, they could honestly move it up a little bit. It's not like we're doing anything right now. Um, the event itself, Valentine's Day 2022, or as we'll call it, Valentine's Day 2024. Um, all you need to participate in it is that you need to have cleared Fuyuki. If you have never done a Valentine's Day events, uh, well, it's a lot of grinding and it's a lot of going and getting chocolates and giving chocolates. So, this is how the event should be scheduled out. You can see here that Act 1 will be available day 1, then the next day, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4, Act 5, Act 6, and then finally Act 7 uh, a week from the start of it. Uh, and then they'll have the epilogue and then free quests, and then you can just grind it out for the last of what you need. Like I said at the beginning, the new unit that's coming with it is Bazette, who is an alter ego for quick. Uh, in terms of the event itself, the event mechanics, just to quickly go over them, basically you are going, it's a mission based event, not mission, points based event, where you'll be get, getting a lot of points. And in the points, you'll be collecting these chocolates, which are surprise chocolates. And then there are lock-on chocolates, which are the heart ones. Um, basically, the rundown is, is that these chocolates give you a random servant. It used to be in the past when there was less servants, you could ch pick and choose which servants. And at a certain point, they realized they can't do that anymore. So now they're very selective on who you can actually do with a lock-on. Um... And lock-on means you just instantly get the one you want the most and stuff like that. So, for the most part, it's surprise. And there's plenty of surprise ones. There's also plenty of lock-on ones, funny enough. If you've been keeping up with the event year to year to year to year, it shouldn't be that hard to actually get anything, everything. But if you want to get absolutely everything, which is you're going to need 3 million points, uh, you best, best start grinding early and get going on it. Because it's going to take a long time. You don't even get the final. You don't even get the final point C until 1.8 million points into the ladder. I didn't even realize. That's a. It's a hefty. Why is that so further in? Actually, no. These have to be in the, in the shop. Yeah, they're in the shop. Okay, to get the fifth copy. That's how you'll get it. Makes sense. Still, very silly to put it at 1.8. Yeah, I know. I said they're in the spicy chocolate, the butter powder, and the cocoa chips. But I'm just saying that in the actual point ladder, to get the fifth copy that you would naturally get, meaning you wouldn't have to randomly get it, it's 1.8 million copies. 1.8 million points, that is. There's no early indications of anything. <laughs> Nothing like that. So anyway... Uh, as my brother's grinding in the back, you can probably tell this event is nothing but grind. There is only grind. There is barely anything to the main quest and the f and the actual quest themselves. The main quest that I can show right here, very simple. Just yo, do it. There's no, there's nothing like the last event where you're like going out and doing specific things. It is literally play the event, do the event, get going on the event. There will be tea break quests, and in these tea break quests, you will be able to get um. The Stargazer Teapots, which you can use for Bond, but these are just available after you've beaten uh, Clear Act 1, Clear Act 2. Do so. There's nothing like special you have to do to actually activate them or something. There's nothing going on here but Choco Grind. That is 100% what this event is focused on, and that's it. There's going to be a new mechanic, which is the Buddy Rank, and Buddy Rank is what is going to be... 
Okay, let me explain it here. So, during the event, servants will gain special event-related skills according to their buddy rank. When you bring your servants to clear event quests, their buddy points go up depending on their position in their party, which the closer to the first position they are, the more buddy points they gain. After reaching a certain amount of buddy points, their buddy rank will increase. Note, the special skills gained from the buddy rank do not enhance the event bonus. Supports uh, servants' special skills depending on their master's acquired buddy rank. Um, in the party formation servants selection screen, a setting to sort servants based on their buddy rank will be added. This is all buddy related things. Um, yeah, so what's buddy rank? Here's how buddy rank goes. There are, the ranks of buddies are E, D, C, B, A, E, X, E, X plus, and then E, X plus plus. At zero points, every, your buddy rank is Z, is E. At 3,000 points, you've ranked Buddy D. At 8,000 points, it's rank C. At 15,000, it is Buddy rank B. At 30,000, it is Buddy rank A. At 50,000, you're at Buddy rank EX. At 90,000, you're at Buddy rank EX+. Plus. And then at 150,000, you're at Buddy rank EX++. Plus plus. And the self-damaging bonus is 100% up for all the EXs. It's 80% for A, 60% for B, 40% for C, 20% for D, and then 10% for E. And then there's also self-bond point bonus, meaning that depending on what rank you got them on the buddy system, um, you'll get bond point bonus. So for obviously just as similar as a self-damage bonus, it is the same for the points. So it's 100% all at the EX level, 80% on A, 60% on B, 40% on C, 20% on D, and 10% on E. And then for MASH specifically, she gives a party bond point bonus based off her buddy points. And it's 20% on rank EX, 16% um, on rank A, 12% um, down below, uh, rank C, 8%, rank D, 6%, rank uh, E, 2%. In layman's terms, you just get bonus buddy points for using the servants that you like. That is the easiest way to put it down there. But, you know, if you're someone who's like going, I would really like to farm bomb points while I'm already farming this ungodly amount of chocolate, it's good, good to thing to kind of look into this. Oh yeah, there will be quests where you can acquire star base points, and the expiration for these are February 28th, so you better use those pots quickly. Um, another new mechanic is that now you can receive up to 10 surprise... <laughs> you can now receive up to 10 surprise Valentine's gifts at once. If you have already seen the Valentine's Day exchange scenes, there will be acquired icon next to the CEs. In the case of the multiple surprise CEs exchange, the exchange scenes that you've already seen will not be played. Only new scenes will be played continuously. You can uncheck the option under the exchange confirmation box to watch the scenes you've already watched. Leave it or watch it by default if you want to skip watch scenes. So yeah, the, when you get the chocolate, there's actually a little cutscene that plays. And depending on how old the servant is, is how good that cutscene is. As you can see here, Saber, hers last maybe they're also fully voiced, so if you are someone who doesn't listen to the uh, soundtrack or play the game with sound, me, um, you it would be a good idea for the ones that you like maybe <laughs> hear it with sound, because they are actually speaking to you and stuff, and it is fully voiced. Now, that being said, Saber over here, hers lasts like two, not even, a, maybe a minute, Mordred lasts 15 seconds because she shows up with a half-eaten candy bar and goes, here you go. And then that's it. But then there's other ones that are like uh, Kama who are super in-depth and have like two different routes that you can go depending on if you want to go uh, fall into depravity or you want to just like stay like a normal, a regular dude. There's different things that will happen. It all depends on how... It all depends on when the unit was made. <laughs> the, the, the closer you get to a newer unit, the more kind of in-depth they are. And the closer you get to old ones, the more quick they are to kind of go through. But either way, it is nice that they're in there. And that you can always have a nice uh, little Valentine's Day exchange with them. I will say most of the men are pretty good. Because when they started out, when they started doing Valentine's Day, it was only women. So a lot of the early year one women have terrible scenes, but a lot of the dudes have a lot of good ones. So shout outs to all the dude loving dudes out there. We're eating extremely well. 
having our dudes have extremely nice gifts. And like I said in the previous videos, their gifts are better than the ladies. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really fair. At a certain point, there's only so much you can do with nice chocolate <laughs> before it becomes too much. It's really more about the idea of who's giving you the chocolate. You know what I mean? It's a sentiment sentimentality about the chocolate itself. Though it's very hard to compare it to like a ticket that can take you to like a Hawaiian Hawaiian realm or something. Anyway, those are the mechanics. There are actual bonus servants. Obviously, Bazette gets 50% uh, bond and 100% damage bonus. Um, but there's also damage bonuses of 50% for um, Lily Medusa, Taiga, uh, Karen, and Astrea, and then 30% to Nero, Sai, Shikabu. Uh, Sammy Ramis, Mr. Harrison X Alter, and Angra Manu. And they also all get 20% bond here. Uh, the event CE is Thank You for Your Hard Work, which is an Arts 8% up, Damage Against Demonic 15%, and then Start MP at 30%. So that means that when you get it at the broken level, it is 50% NP damage. And that's not too bad. For some of the newer players starting off, I have to remember this because someone actually reminded me recently. Uh, is that a lot of the older CEs that I have that are 50% starting NP gauge, I'm like, why would I ever use this over this? And then someone comments and says, oh, because if you weren't playing during that specific time, you don't have access to them. So access to a 50% starting NP gauge um, CE, very welcomed, very nice. And this one is also arts related. It would be probably a little bit nice. Actually, if you're going against demonic dudes, it's pretty good. Demonic and arts, obviously based off of uh, Shikabu's kit over here. Um, because Shikabu is an arts unit, and she's also really good fighting against demonic dudes. Uh, the event reward command codes are the Flower of the Underworld, uh, Damage Against the Undead, 20% on the engraved card, the Cursed Spear that reverses causality, uh, sure hit, I don't know how I was able to say causality, sure hit and critical damage, 10% on the engraved card, the Buddy Ring Gold, when attacked with a grave card, gain one crit star plus one debuff, uh, receive chance down by 10%, one turn, I should also mention, this is important, if you are a big lover of Oberon, finish Lost Belt 6, because if you don't finish Lost Belt 6, you will not be able to, uh, not, yeah, if you have not cleared Avalon Le Fay, you will not be able to get Oberon's chocolate, and you will have to wait an entire year. <laughs> yeah. And not his chocolate, his Valentine's Day gift. So keep that in mind. They put spoilers in his Valentine's Day CE, so you have to actually complete Avalon Le Fay if you want to see it. They could have just made it so that you don't see the cutscene, but they decided to go, nah, you just don't get it. So, hurry up, is what I'll say. <laughs> Good luck to you. Uh, here we go. There will also be some servant strength things, mainly to Karen. Her Noble Phantasm goes from Ank EX to EX. <laughs> And then she deals increased damage against chaotic al uh, alignment enemies. It turns a good unit into a good unit. And so Karen just getting buffs. Pretty nice. Summoning campaign. So like I said, I will talk about Bizet. I will just show all the order. These are all the servants that are going to be included in this specific one, which is why I'm saving them for a se separate video. A lot of these units you already know if you want to go for them is what I'll say. If you want a quick and dirty of it. Like obviously, nothing I can say can convince someone that, hey, you should go for Dioscuri. But at the same time, if you badly want Dioscuri, you're going to go get them. Because that's the one that you care about most. That's kind of how I view them as. Uh, especially for Valentine's Day around. Like, the selection of the units, it doesn't really matter what they do. It's Valentine's Day, and they're here because somebody wants them. And if you want them, I wish you the best of luck in getting them, basically. But here's how the schedule will, will break down. On uh, Bazette is obviously here from day one until... The band until the event leaves, but on day one, the no, actually, yes, it should be day one, either day one or day two. I can never tell with JP times, but this says February 11th, so I can only assume it would be the next day for us. Um, we got Setonia, Quetz, and um, Artoria Lancer. That's the first three up, and then it's Maeve, and then it's Orion. And then it's Shirazadi on the next day. And then the next day after that is Europa, Descuri, and then um, Fantastic Elephant, Janako. And then the next day after that, it is Bradamante, it is Vitria, it is Tamamo. The day after that, it's Altera. It is Mordred, it is uh, Sangzong. The day after that, it is Anastasia, it is Saber, it is Drake. The day after that, it is Osaka Behime. 
It is Jack. It is Jean. The day after that is Galatea and Nightingale, and that should end it off right there. And then in terms of the craft essences, there's some nice craft essences. We have Valentine's Day Witches, which is, features uh, everyone's favorite mother and daughter pair right here. Melty Love. And then, oh man, I forgot. I, it's funny because I had this exact same reaction last time. <laughs> Hot Chocolate, obviously the greatest CE of our time, features everyone's favorite Jaguar Warrior and, of course, Quetzalcoatl on it. She so rarely gets CE art unless it's, like, promotional of some kind. They hate my girl, but it's great because they've made a lovely CE, um, and it's great. Three star, but obviously six star in my heart. Next, um, Bazette, let's talk about her. She is an alter ego. She is too. She is too quick. One arts, two buster. I was catching my breath. I wasn't like making a. That's not a sign to say like, oh, terrible kid. It was just literally, I should stop talking for a bit and catch my breath. Uh, active skills, <laughs> ceiling, designation, enforcer A. Increases on quick performance for three turns. Increases on buster performance for three turns. Increases on crit damage for three turns. Increases on damage against caster enemies for three turns. Uh, the quick buster and crit damage are all 30%, as is the quick, the caster damage, which I should have just mentioned here at the end. And the cooldown is 6. Her second skill, Sea God's Ruin, EX, Ruin, Sea God's Ruin, Ruin. Why am I doing a Family Guy bit? Charges on MP gauge, increases on critical star absorption for one turn, increases on critical damage for one turn. NP up is 50%, the absorption is 500%, and the crit damage is 100%, and the cooldown is 6. <clears throat> Third skill, Succession of the Red Branch B, grants self-evasion for a single turn, grants self-debuff immunity for one turn, and then you get some crit stars, and that is a cooldown of 5. Uh, her passive skills are Magic Resistance B, Writing A, Divinity B, and the God Holder's Traditional Carrier EX, which is an increase against crit damage by 5%, and then extends offensive buff expiration of timing on self from the end of that player's turn to the end of the enemy's turn. And this is all the offensive buffs. What does that mean? It will it'll make more sense when I go over her NP if you are unaware of what she actually does. Her third skill is an anti-Avenger attack damage aptitude. And her noble phantasm is the rank EX frog rock uh, That is not how you say it. Forgive me. Uh, gouging sword of the war god. Rank EX. Uh, noble phantasm type. It's a counter. Draws attention to all enemies to self by 500% for one turn. Grants self the Fraggle Rock counter. Uh, that is... N <laughs> I keep wanting to say Fraggle Rock. And that's, that is not how you... It is uh, Fragarok? I don't know. I'm, I think it's Celtic by nature. And I wish... I If any of you Celtic dudes are still around <laughs> who helped me with Skahawk, please tell me how to actually pronounce this. Because it's going to bug the shit out of me if I don't know it fully. And trying to look it up actually doesn't help at all because the mispronunciations on Google, a lot of them are incorrect and it's filled with people saying that is not how you say it. So, either way, uh, please help. <laughs> please, for the love of God, help me. The counter is one hit, 100% quick type Noble Phantasm card attack, treated as neither a buff or debuff, deals damage to a single enemy, to one enemy, when taking attack or becoming target of active skills by them, except some special actions. If the enemy has a break gauge, the counterattack cannot break it and the 1 HP remains. Reduces their quick resistance by 10% for 3 turns. Gain 10 crit stars. Note, because there's a lot to go over this. I hope you're fucking ready. If buff block is used to an enemy on um, Bazette, and if Renoble Phantasm is used after that, then the attack up and the taunt effects on her NP will be blocked, but the... The counter will be successfully cast in succeeding action if the enemy either uses an AoE attack or an attack aimed at her or uses an AoE debuff or debuff aimed at her, she will be able to counter these actions. If a buff removal skill is used by the enemy on uh, Bazette after her Noble Phantasm is used, both the attack up and the taunt will successfully get removed, but the counter will not get removed. This buff removal is treated as a normal action by the enemy, so she will be able to counter it at the succeeding action. If the enemy either uses an AoE attack or an attack aimed at her or uses an AoE debuff, or a debuff aimed at her, she will be able to counter these actions. If Bazette is immobilized, the counter will not be activated, because 
you know, she can't fucking move. The counter is also not triggered when her HP is reduced to zero by an enemy attack. However, if she is revived by Guts, the counter will be activated. Also, if she is sacrificed to Chen Gong's NP while in the gut state, the counter will not trigger. Angra Manu's reflect damage also cannot trigger the counter. The counter can bypass having taunt. The counter will retaliate against the attacker regardless of whether another enemy has taunt. The counter will be activated if the MP drain debuff is used by the enemy either on party or targeted on Bazette. And the counter damage at level 1 is 600% and 1000 at MP level 5. And her overcharge effect, which is an increase to own attack for one turn, activates first. Charge 1, attack 10% up. And then if you get it all the way to the final charge level, it is 30%. And that is Bazette. And this is a really cool ass unit. She has a counter. If you ever played Dokkan. <laughs> Remember back in the day when they introduced Super Vegito? It's it kind of feels like that at times. I remember when she first debuted. It was really cool. Now, that being said, she is a super cool unit and she can also be used in a lot of boss fights for that specific reason cuz the way her kit is kind of triggered, obviously, it's better in some cases than others. Funny enough, I have seen videos of people farming with Bazette and it's really funny because it is a um it is a counter. I, I need to see it again. But the way that the counter works, it should be able to clear off the enemies in a funny way. Um, I think it only does it to one, though, if I remember right. I might have to re-see that video now that I've actually read through this more. I've... Anyway. Good continuing on. She is a really cool unit. She the the ray the read this skill right here, the God Holder's traditional carrier, basically means that her offensive buffs last a single turn more than they would normally. So the way it goes is that when you apply the um the thirty percent the fifty percent quick buff, like let's say from Scotty, it would last for three turns. But the three turns are counted as three turns of your regular turns and then it's the enemy's turn and on the third turn of your turn the skill goes away for Bazette, it technically lasts to a fourth turn because it goes to the enemy's turn and she keeps a hold of that 50 percent for that one last bit right there so she gets to hold on to these abilities just for a little bit longer than most normal units and the reason is is because obviously what the hell are the point of offensive buffs on your enemy's turn it's not like they're really going to do anything <laughs> But the fact that she's able to keep them is really cool, and if it wasn't for this, it would make it so that her unit was not is was going to be a little bit less effective than you would have wanted. So it was good on them to realize, hey, we should increase this. And she's, I think at this point, the only unit that has this kind of ability as far as I'm aware. And it's a really cool unit. I've also seen from a lot of people, from what I've understood, because I went looking to see a little bit more, from my friend who had her on JP, who was a big Bazette fan, who was, oh, was they, <laughs> since from when I could remember, what had always wanted Bazette as an anniversary unit or a Valentine's Day unit or any kind of collab unit, any form, he had her and he's been using her and he says he really does like her. She's a super cool unit to use. She's super fun. The problem is, is that you have to fully dedicate the team to her. Um, so it's something to kind of keep in mind, and at the same time, if you're not actually, like, it's kind of one of those units that really rewards someone who is paying attention to the unit itself. So it's not a unit that a lot of people, like me, for example, um, if I wasn't fully ready and willing to understand kind of, like, the ins and out and how the character works about how certain th interactions would kind of go... It's possible for you to actually use her counter and just nothing happens. And that's something to be kind of keep in mind as you're kind of using her is that depending on the situations, maybe there will be a case of where like, hey, maybe they just buff themselves. Because as you can see here, the counter activates if they try and debuff you or if they use certain skills. But if they're buffing themselves and they're not really hitting you, that would mean that the counter just doesn't work if I'm reading this correctly um because it deals damage when an enemy is attacking or a target of active skills see or becoming deals damage to one enemy when a tanking attack or becoming the target of an active skill so if they never become the target of the active skill um then obviously it can't actually work out then you just <laughs> they just buff themselves and you do nothing and you wasted an np and that can kind of feel bad and that can end up making you feel like the unit is bad itself but it's not a unit being bad it's a, a it's a skill issue i'm afraid <laughs> Uh, the other thing that's kind of cool is here is that, you, as you mentioned here with break bars, obviously if the break gauge is broken on the enemy turn, it won't. It will stay at 1 HP and you can't break it. But it's actually possible to crazy quick break 
gauges with Bazette because it doesn't say what happens when you specifically break the gauge on your turn. So if you're going against a break bar enemy, it's your turn, you're using Bazette. Okay, you use your turn, you fully break the break gauge. What happens next? The break gauge goes down. On your enemy turn, they attack you. Then what happens? The enemy gets countered in the fucking face by Bazette. And then they lower all the way back down to one. And now you're in a situation where now it's your turn time to follow up. If you have her NP ready to go again, smack him up in the face one more time. <laughs> And you can kind of keep the loop going. So it's actually possible with certain bosses, if they have three break uh, break gauges, you should be able to actually beat the boss in two. <laughs> in two turns instead of requiring three. Because obviously the two break bars, you'd have to take one turn to take down the one break bar, the second turn to take down the second break bar, and then on the third turn you finally beat them. But with Bazette, what you can do is that you can take it down the first one, during your enemy's turn you break the break gauge again, and then on your follow-up turn you beat them. It's kind of crazy. Like I said, this unit is super cool. <laughs> and it helps that it's Bazette as well, which is also a really cool character, so I really like this character. Should you summon for them? That's a question you have to leave up for yourself, man. It's a very, it's a very rough year. Summer is three SSRs. Summer Ibuki is going to be a part of it. You ha I think if you're someone who's like, maybe at best from what I can kind of gauge from a lot of people's responses, is a lot of people are allowing themselves one or two summons before summer slash anniversary. Because I mentioned summer, but I completely also neglected anniversary, which also has fucking arc in it. That's insane. That's crazy. This year, a lot of people are focused around that time. They want those units... They understand that there's going to be some sacrifices that have to be made, and you won't have to pull on some units. But at the same time, Anniversary is still decent months away. So it is possible for you to do maybe one multi, two multis, if you're someone who is being very hesitant and wants to save absolutely everything. That's about as much you can give. I usually say three multis is my go-to for a unit that I really badly want, but I understand that I have to start saving up for some other stuff in the future, and that's what I've allowed myself for Bazette at the current feeling. But the more I kind of think about the unit, it's going to be very tough for me to actually just stick, stay to the three. But I'm going to do my damnedest. I have so far not actually gotten a single SSR for the year, I think. The month has started, as far as I can remember. Uh, I've obviously got the one from the GSSR. But I think for the most part, I have failed at the ones that I wanted to get back in the video where I talked about my breakdown for it. Which was... Yeah, which was all of them I tried for him, but it was a, just like a throwaway multi or two, and that's it. But this will be the first one where I'm actually going to be trying for him. So again, if you're looking for a crazy time good unit, obviously you know that that's Summer Ibuki. I think in terms of pure practicality, um, it's hard to kind of compare her to something like Summer Ibuki, who's amazing at AoE farming, or someone like Castoria, or... Oberon or dudes like that it's 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 a little weird and obviously those are the units that most people are going to be going because those are the units that actually or even Summer Scotty who's coming out this uh year and during summer who would be a support for Bazette and those are the usual units that you kind of go for because those are the ones that allow you to do the nonsense like all the stuff that I mentioned with Bazette none of that happens if you don't have Scotty and if you don't have Scotty, it's going to be a little bit tough to kind of do all the like nonsense that you do. So for the sake of the game, you kind of have to prioritize them. But if you already have them and then you're already looking for, you're already kind of looking forward to the future and you see what is on the horizon for summer and for anniversary and you see like, okay, none of the other banners in between there really interest me that much. Maybe it's my time to go for Bazette. And I say go for it. But at the same time, there's plenty of people. And trust me, they tell me this every single time because it makes us... <laughs> Funny, when I try and be helpful, it really makes it sound like I'm saying, like, hey, don't summon for the units that you love, and that's not how I want to ever go about it. I say you should go for the units that you love, and you should 100% try for them. And if you fail at them, that's just the gotcha at some point. As long as you're not crazy going it with money, this unit will return. She'll be back next year, um, honestly. And if you want to actually <laughs> start doing crazy summons, you can do my my what I did for Summer Ibuki, which was start saving every single ticket you have, and in two years' time, you will get Bazette that way. And that's guaranteed. I don't know. Plenty of techniques to kind of go for it. Um... I'm going to be trying for Bazette, is the long and the short of this. I really hope I'm able to get her. Um, I really want to kind of mess around and 
do a lot of the stuff in there. I was a big fan of Super Vegito when he dropped on Dokkan. I really like the idea of counters. She's the only unit, as far as I'm aware of, with a counter. Obviously, on Grimanyu has like a reflection, but that's not 100% the same thing um, compared to a counter. And I think she's a cool unit. And she's a, a cool-looking lady with a with a coat on. And that's enough for me sometimes. Like, regardless of what the unit did, I was already set, like, two years ago when they revealed her that I'm going to be summoning for her. The fact that I just read her all down and I said, wow, and that sounds really cool, really shows where my priorities lie. <laughs> Which is, I see the unit first, I go, got you, summoning for you in two years. And then ten, two years happen, I'm like, okay, so what does this unit do? How does other people feel about them? I don't do that stuff until it's actually game day. <laughs> I don't really think about that stuff. What I think about is, this unit looks dope. Gonna go for them. And that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I will be back later with another video focused on them. There will be a summon video for Bazette on my side while I'll try the three multi. Boy, are you summoning any on Bazette? Not you, Boyle. No? What about you, Lucifer? Is Camilla, are you planning on summoning for Bizet? I think that's a no. <laughs> she did meow back. So I'm going to assume that's a no. And that's the end of the video. I'll see you guys later. Uh, you guys have a good day. Best of luck on your summons. And I'll see you guys at a later time. Bye-bye.